the last 10 minutes or so, I'm not going to belabor this again too much. Again, this is a huge topic. I can't possibly cover everything in this. I mentioned earlier, the, there's, so the parameters that I've calculated, right, these two parameter values, I got them here. They themselves are noisy, right? If my data is noisy, then these parameter estimates themselves are going to be noisy. If my data changes a little, these parameter estimates are going to change. Hopefully not by too much, but they are going to change a little bit. The good thing about linear regression as opposed to nonlinear regression is that the error in these parameter estimates can be pinpointed to by just a formula. And I'm not, the reading goes through some of these formulae. I, at this point, like given how much time we have allocated, we're not going to see these formulae. I, all I want you to realize is that these formulae exist. And so if you start getting into linear regression, you know that you can go and find these formulae. It's important to be able to, to know those things if you're doing things like this. R squared value, we've all seen this in Excel. And hopefully, this will finally help you understand what R squared means. R squared means I take my data and I fit a line to it, and then I compare how well a flat line fit that data. That's actually the interpretation of R squared. So again, I got, I got some data, right? And I fit a line to that data, and I compare how much the data differs from this line as opposed to how much the data differ, differs from this line. That's what gives me R squared. Now you can think about what that means when you see the R squared value. Fun, which means everything is awesome, but what that really means is up for question, right? Because you can imagine that, so, so, right, so you can imagine that your model may not be as good as you would like it to be, Right, the fits may not look as good, but your R squared value may be very high because the fit with a horizontal line looks horrible. Right, so that's something worth thinking about. That's the that's the numerator. This this the denominator is the horizontal line. So it's the denominator here says y minus y mean, all squared. And the horizontal line is nothing but the mean of your data. So, good to know, right, what r squared actually means. Okay, good. Um, then I'm not good, again, not spending too much time on this, but we talked about OLS, which required, which had this assumption, if you remember, it was like assumption two or something, that every by i is normally distributed, the variance is independent of x. That's an assumption that's made in ordinary least squares, but what if it's not true, right? That assumption's not true. Radioactive decay is a Poisson process, which means that the variance depends on the mean, right? Which means that as you're decaying over time, your variance is gonna change. Very simple process, and I can't even use OLS model. So, there's this thing called weighted least squares, where I can say, where I can attribute weights to different data points. Basically, the intuition here is that if a data point is noisy, I can tell my regression that this data point's noisy, so hold off, don't rely on it too much. The data points that are less noisy, you rely on it a lot, right? And the way that works is going back to this sort of likelihood thing, if this sigma squared just gets replaced by sigma i squared, sigma i squared, then I weighted least squared. That's it. I just replace the sigma squared with sigma i squared because now my variance changes with each year, right? And so in matrix form, when you look at a solution, you basically, this is very similar to the solution that we looked at above, except this weighting matrix has been introduced. And that weighting matrix may have a form in an ideal situation like this, where the this one over sigma, this di it's a diagonal matrix, so which means only the diagonal values have non uh, have non-zero values. And so this one over sigma one squared, again, I'm not gonna go into the derivation, but it comes from the fact that you have this sigma i squared here. And you can look at the derivation on the internet or something like that, but I just want you to be aware that we can deal with situations like this through a technique called WLS, and that's to account for noise, which is varying throughout your data set, and then you can still use linear regression if you wanted to, and it'll give you a better because, because, because of the assumption that have been made, of course, OLS doesn't hold, but WLS will then in that case. Again, um, does that make sense generally? I mean, we're not gonna get into the math of this right now, but I want you, the takeaway has to be that 
technique called WLS, which can be used when noise is varying throughout your data set. And then there's a formula for that in linear regression. WLS and implementing it, this is, as I mentioned, in an ideal scenario, sometimes you have to come up with weights of your own and so on. That's what WLS entails in the end. Okay. Final thing. Um, Linear param, we haven't talked about this thing where, what if I want to solve two linear parameter estimations at the same time, right? So what if, what if I want a solution to y is equal to ax while wanting, or y is equal to ab as I had, while demanding that every value of b in there should be positive. I didn't demand that right now. I said give me any parameter vector b, right? So if I want that, there's a way to do that in linear parameter estimation and you should take like more classes at Stanford if you're getting interested by this stuff. Um, for that specific problem in MATLAB, you have something called LSQ non-neg, so that's like the shortcut for now. You can also implement your own formulae in matrix form to do that, but there are some other LSCOV, LSQ non-neg, these are some other linear optimization tools that are in MATLAB. In Marcus's class, I'm sure you looked at simplex a little bit because are, are just some variant of, uh, of getting parameters from flux balance. Is that, is that familiar? Do you guys do simplex? But linear programming in general, you sort of got introduced to some linear programming, right? Linprog, yeah, linear programming, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, um, but, so, so, but, um, right, so, this is just, we've done, we have not made any demands on our parameter vector B right now, but you can imagine that there are a lot of demands that we can make, right? If you're calculating, say, fluxes that you need, know must be positive, then you can't have B coming out negative. So you have to put constraints on the system. And when the problem gets too complicated, then you go start going to things like linfrog or something. In simple cases, you can still use like LSQ non neg for example, or something like that. Help these commands in MATLAB to figure out what these functions do. Hopefully they'll be useful.